Hi everyone, this is a free lecture from my Fast Rigging and Animation Techniques course. You can get the full course on Udemy by clicking on the link in the description. It's only $10 and I hope you enjoy the free lesson. In this lesson we'll learn the basics of the time editor. Okay, so we've made our clips and now we're going to learn how to use them. So let's go into the file that we just created, the Trooper Rigged one. And say open and just make sure that you're in the animation view layout so we've got this layout here with the time editor there and then I'm just going to zoom in here a little bit maybe turn my anti-aliasing on so it looks a bit cleaner okay and I'm just going to take my time slider and take it to the start here one this yellow marker here is basically the current time you can drag that as well and it's the same thing as dragging it in the uh, scrubbing it in the timeline okay so the reason we're putting it there is because whenever we import a clip that's where it's going to import where this time marker is so if I press this button here to import it's going to open up inside the time editor folder in your project that so you've got the clip exports where you exported and we'll just import the fight that we exported so I'm going to say open and now you can see that we've got our clip there it's going to assign a color randomly to this so you can change that later if you need to but this is the clip and so you can press play and you'll see the clip playing. So first of all, it's just great to save out animations separately from your character and then reuse them on other characters, which is great. The other thing you can do is obviously edit these so we can cut them up and repeat them, etc. So the first thing we'll look at is just cutting them up. So if you see these three buttons here, that's for cutting it up and you can just put your time slider where you want to cut it and you can press this button here to split the clip and we need to select the clip first and then split the clip there we go so now we've got two clips and we've got uh, we can change the speed of that or whatever we need to do okay another way we can do that i'm just going to get rid of this another way we can do that is if we wanted to get everything to the left and delete it we could use this button here which would trim it select it again keep forgetting to select it there we go and it will trim that section off and the same thing for the front there so if we click on this button here it's going to trim the front off there so if we want to get this back this is completely non-destructive it's not actually getting rid of anything it's just literally clipping it so all that information is still there which is the beauty of this time editor so we can just drag this and bring it back if we wanted to just make sure that you're in the this mode here which is the trim mode in fact if you wanted to just set it back to the way it was there's a nice little handy little right click icon here which is reset timing so if I reset timing it's just going to reset that back to the way it was so that's quite handy these buttons here are the different modes and they're useful to know so again this is the trim button so if we click on that you can obviously trim it just by dragging okay which is a nice way of doing it as well and then we can also use this button here which is for scaling so if we click on this button here we're going to make the animation faster or slower depending on which way we drag it so if I drag this and make it smaller this is going to play faster now so you can see it's playing faster okay we can reset that again just by saying reset timing and then we can also repeat that clip if we wanted to by using this button here which is the loop mode and if I just drag it you can see I'm just going to loop it and if I just zoom out here just use my scroll wheel and just drag this out you can see you get a little marker there and each time that marker is there that's one loop of this animation so that's pretty cool and then you can drag the end here just to trim that off if you wanted to just have part of that that edge there as well and you can carry on adjusting it as well if you wanted to so if you wanted to trim it and just you know trim that it's going to update the uh, the thing as well so you can move that along and it's going to update the loop there see the loop is getting longer as well okay I'm just going to reset that again right click reset and then we've got the last mode here which is the repeat the hold mode so a lot of the time you want to actually hold the pose in case you want to make a transition so you, what you can do is you can use this this mode here and you'll get let me just zoom in here we'll get a little marker saying that it's going to hold that pose so this little line here indicates that it's going to hold that pose okay so all these animations go on to what's called a track so this track is basically a bunch of controls that you selected when you created your clip okay so you can have these tracks you can have as many of these tracks as you want 
Uh, so you can have different ones for the arms, the legs, if you wanted to, things like that. And so some of these buttons for this this track is basically this button here to show the keys. So you can see the individual keys inside there. Just uh, zoom out here. You can use your view controls here to frame all. It's the usual shortcut keys of A and F to, to frame. So these are the keyframes, which is quite handy. Sometimes you want to know where you've keyed something. So I'm just going to turn that off. You've also got the deactivate, the mute. So you can turn that off if you want to do, if you're playing around with an animation and you wanted to see if it looks better with or without it, you could just mute that track and turn it back on and it would update. So just turn that back on. And then we've also got this button here, which is to solo it. So it's going to turn all the other tracks off and just leave this one on. So if you wanted to have compared two different animations, two completely different animations, then you could do that by clicking on this button here. Okay. This button here is for ghosting. So if I click on ghosting, you can see this kind of ghost here of the skeleton. And we'll use that later on, just trying to match poses between clips. But that's how you turn on the actual ghosting. So we can also rename this by double clicking and just rename it to whatever we want to. And this is the weight of the track. So we can actually animate the weight of these tracks. So that's what tracks are. Over here, we've got compositions and compositions are basically a brand new, uh, in a way, it's like a scene for the animation. So for example, this one is the fight. And if we created a new one, if we press this button here to create a new uh, composition, we can name it whatever we want to and we can say okay and we've got a brand new kind of working composition here and we can do whatever we want to it so if we go to the first frame and select that track and then just go to file import import to animation clip and just import the run it's going to import that run in there okay so now you can see it's over here let's zoom out it's just in a different place so just coming in here just to frame this up and now you can see that this has got the run animation. So we can switch between these if we want to check and we can compare those things. So you can duplicate your composition by using this button here and then play with it so that you can try out different timings and different animations. So it's really cool. So we can get rid of these compositions by just clicking on delete composition and it will delete the current one that you're on. So I'm just going to go to my composition two, for example, and just say delete composition and it's going to get rid of that. Okay, so that's what these two buttons do. You can also rename the composition from here as well if you want to. And there's also the mute button here, which is really important. So if you press this mute button, it's going to mute this entire time editor sort of feature. So if I click on that, what you'll see is the keys on the actual character, if I had any keys on the character. So we don't actually have any keys on the character. You can see here that it's got this icon saying it's not actually on. So now the animation is not actually working okay because time editor if you're using the time editor you should only use the time editor i wouldn't on a character for example i wouldn't mix keyframe and the time editor because it gets very confusing so this basically activates the keys uh, it activates the time editor so i can just turn that whole feature off and on if i wanted to uh, if you look inside your outliner you'll actually see the time editor there and if you open that up you'll see your compositions there and you can see you can rename it from there if you wanted to. And inside your tracks, you've got your clips there as well. The sources are anything you've imported. So whenever you import something, it creates uh, an animation source as well. So that's quite cool. So moving along here, we've got toggle ripple. And this is like an editor. If you want it to kind of be stuck together, you can turn this on and it's going to ripple the edit. As you, if, you, if you cut something out, it's not going to leave a space, for example. Um, this has also got a toggle keep transition. So if you've got a transition in between two clips, we'll have a look at transitions a bit later. But if, you, if you've got a transition between two clips, then it's basically going to keep that transition there if you move it. Otherwise, it gets rid of it, which is sometimes quite annoying. It's got the snapping button, and it's going to snap to clips when you drag them close to each other. We've got the weight curve, uh, which I mentioned earlier. So if you've keyed this, you can actually bring up the weight curve and adjust the, the weighting on it. And then we'll have a look at these two later to create a relocator and match poses with relocator. This is for mixing two different animation clips. And then we've got layers. So in this feature, you can basically override the animation. So let's say we wanted his head to be looking in a certain direction. So we want the same animation, but we want to animate on top of it. We can use something like an additive layer, which is going to add on top of that animation. If we wanted to completely replace the animation, we could actually use an override 
layer which would override the animation okay so that's a really useful feature and what you do is you select your clip and then you just press one of these and then you create an, a layer you have to add whatever control you want to it so you, I already had these selected so it's added those to the to the layer and you can see all those controls all those channels like rotate and translate of all those controls are in there which is quite a lot of controls there let me just close that up and then you can see any keys that you've done in that layer so that layer belongs to that clip so we'll have a look at this a bit later but we can just delete these by just pressing backspace or delete and then or you can right click and say delete layer if you had a bunch of those layers you can group them together using this button here which is group and uh, if I just undo that actually I can just show you now if I select these guys and just say group group the current selection you can see that you've got a group there so it's quite handy when you've got a bunch of different uh, tracks and you can group them together so you can say oh this is the animation for this part of the of the scene for example so you can control that overall by using this and then you can open it by opening it inside here so I can ungroup that by clicking the other button which is ungroup and that will get rid of the group so these two buttons here are to create clips and create poses so if you click this button here you can create a clip like we did earlier and so if you select your objects with an animation on there and you click on this button here you'll create a new clip and you can rename it or whatever you want to do you can also create poses which is quite handy so if I were to take this pose for example uh, I would select the controls so let's just turn off the FK controls and I'm going to select these controls here and then I can click on this button here it's going to make a new track for me this is track one and it's got a new pose there I could rename that if I wanted to and I could create another pose and actually transition between those two so if I move along maybe to a different pose and then create a, another pose out of that okay I just be sure to select this otherwise it will create another track for it but you can just drag it up if you wanted to and then pause this one we can mute this one and so if we just drag this now we can see we've got this pose and we've got this pose and uh, it looks like I haven't selected the right controls there but you get the idea and then we can select these two together and right click and say create transition and it's going to kind of animate between those two Whoop so you can see those two poses uh, it looks like I haven't selected the right controls for this particular pose but you get the idea okay just gonna get rid of these and unmute that so in this lesson we had a look at the basics of the time editor we had a look at how to scale clips loop clips and cut them up we also had a look at what compositions are what tracks are and what layers are